good morning dear students today i am going to start uh, next sub file that is cephalo codita by the last class we have finished euro codita okay first point reason for the name cephalo codita look in this word cephalo cephalo means something relating with the head uh, so what speciality to uh, the anterior end in the case of cephalo codita let me see that uh, here, uh, this is a schematic uh, diagram, how it looks uh, in its anterior end. Uh, anterior side, if we examine, we can see that the notochord, this is the notochord, it, it extends more towards the uh, anterior tip of its body. And that extension uh, creates a snout. So, because of the present of the snout in the anterior region, it got the name cephalocodita. Okay. Uh, the main reason, in a more simplified way, I will tell you one, uh, one more time. Uh, in cephalocodita, the notochord extends uh, towards the anterior end in the form of a snout. That is why and the cephala got that name cephalocodita. And in this case, its uh, uh, brain is not covered with the skull. So, it is called a crania also. A means absent. Crania is absent. Um, then, uh, it possesses all the three primary caudal characters like notochord, dorsal tubular nerve cord and gill slits. All these features we have already learned in the first class itself. So, don't need to explain anymore. Next slide and this cephalocodata uh, and the eurocodata. These two sub uh, phyla um, emerge from a common ancestor. Okay, next. Uh, which are the members? Which are members uh, included in cephalocodata? Uh, Amphioxus and uh, other related organism come under this sub -phyla. Then we are going to learn about its general characters, habit and habitat, uh, whatever it is found and what is its nature. They are marine burrowing animals. They are marine as well as burrowing animals. Um, head is there, tail is there and using the head, head it can uh, create burrows in the sand. That is its habit. I will show you later how it is uh, living in the burrow. Next point about its body form. Uh, it is a small fish like uh, organism. Um, head and paired appendages are totally absent. Instead of that what they have? They have a caudal fin that is in towards the posterior end. A dorsal fin, then tail is there and then ventral fin is there. How many fins? Caudal, uh, dorsal, uh, then a ventral fin. Fins. And uh, this is the tail region. Tail region only showing here. Different types of fin which are the different uh, types of fin seen in this form. Caudal fin, dorsal fin and ventral fin. Uh, then regarding the body wall, body wall composed of uh, epidermis and dermis. Then this dermis is composed of connective tissue, uh, then striated muscle and parietal peritoneum. Uh, th this much lays are uh, there as part of the dermis. Next, regarding the muscles. Dorsal muscles are well developed in this form and the muscles exist in the form of segments and that segments are called myomas. myomas. Uh, a segmentation is seen in this organism. Uh, we can tell that they have metamerism. We know that metamerism is a synonym term for segmentation. Then coming to the skeleton. Exoskeleton means uh, outside hardy uh, structures. Hard, uh, sorry, outside hard structures. 
uh, is totally absent in the case of this um, uh, uh, cephalocodex. Endoskeleton is present, which is composed of notochord and other skeletal structures. Then coming to coelom. Coelom is, uh, is not at all true coelom or uh, pseudo coelom. Instead of that, it have an enterocelous coelom. Enterocelous coelom means what? Uh, in this case, how the coelom is forming? It is forming first in the form of two pouches emerging from the endodome. And these pouches are called mesodermal pouch. And later these mesodermal pouches pinches off from this endodome and then it expands and develop into a serum. That type of serum is called enterocelous serum. And this serum is greatly reduced towards the pharyngeal region. Why it reduces um, towards the pharyngeal region? I will show you that. Because towards the pharyngeal region, its anterior end is somewhat like this. Uh, and this is its pharynx. Pharynx is perforated by gill slits. Ah, towards the pharynx, uh, there is another um, cavity present. It is called the atrium. As atrium is present here, that is why the space of the endorocelous serum is highly reduced towards the pharyngeal region. Okay, next slide. Uh, digestive system. Regarding the digestive system, you see, it is complete. Complete means what? Uh, wherever we see that the digestive system is complete, we need to understand that the digestive system starts from mouth and ends up in yen. Sorry, ends up in yens. Start from mouth and ends up in yens. And also it has midgut diverticulum. Midgut diverticulum means it is a digestive gland that is in cephalocodids. And regarding the pharynx, it is very, very large, perforated by gills. How uh, respiration is taking place in cephalocodids? Through diffusion. Diffusion means the, the by means of the water that enters uh, its body. Uh, with the help of that water, it carry out its respiration. Uh, how it happens? I think you know that anyway. Once more, I am showing that. Uh, this is a... It's anterior end. As water enters its body, the oxygen that is present in the water is taking in and the carbon dioxide that is present in the body is giving to this water. And it is coming uh, or released out through the pharyngeal gill slits. Openings. Simply I am just uh, representing what is the process. Circulatory system, it is closed, means it is um, having blood vessels, heart and uh, blood vessels are there, respiratory pigments also present like hemoglobin, uh, some other pigments also present um, uh, in this cephalocodids. Excretory organs, uh, excretion is done by paid protonephridia, protonephridia, I will show its picture. I am just uh, showing is not an um, organism coming under cephalocodid, but uh, I am just showing this picture to make you understand about the protonephridia, how its organization, how its structure, how it function. Uh, so, uh, somewhat uh, in this way it appears and it extends throughout the body of the cephalocodex from anterior end to posterior end. And uh, it has a main stem and uh, some side branches are there. And this is a expand view of that side uh, branch, side uh, bulb-like um, branch. Uh, what is inside this structure? It is a bulbous structure. And inside the bulbous structure, we can see uh, cilia. Um, and uh, also the wall is perforated by numerous slits. And through these slits, uh, water can end up inside this uh, protonephridia. And because of the beating of this cilia, 
uh, the water uh, moves further down and it can flows like this way uh, throughout the entire length of the body as the water moves down whatever nutrients present in that water can be taken in and also whatever waste present in the body or generated inside the body that is eliminated into this fluid and that fluid that containing waste is finally releasing out through a open opening this is the simple organization of this protonephridia i am just uh, explaining only for you to make it understand uh, okay i think it's very clear to you excretory system, organs and uh, system is very clear to you now next uh, nervous system nervous system there is no distinct brain for the cephalopodids uh, but they possess cerebral nerves cerebral nerves means nerves uh, emerging from the anterior uh, part of the nervous system and uh, uh, spinal nerves are there that means uh, the nerves that seen in the um, trunk region towards the posterior uh, end of the body from the spinal cord uh, somewhat spinal cord um, whatever nerves are emerging that nerves are called the spinal nerves sense organs are uh, present it's very simple next uh, regarding the reproduction and development sexes are separate that means gonochoric uh, then fertilization uh, occurs by external and indirect indirect fertilization also there then uh, gonads are arranged segmentally that means segment by segment gonads are present in his body and regarding the classification cephalocordid uh, has only a single class leptocardae and this leptocardae is again divided into two families um, asymmetron and epigonitis these are the two families next we are going to learn about the its uh, typical example that is branchus tomata or amphioxus is very important regarding regarding with its general features so many one mark question also may come for your examination anyway you can start its common name is lancet and it is discovered by this organism is discovered by palas and uh, its habitat habitat where uh, we can find this amphioxus or uh, branchus tomata they are marine and is found in shallow offshore sands in temperate oceans in temperate oceans near to the shore uh, in the sand we can find this amphioxus and how they used to uh, live in that sand they buried its head its anterior end uh, down to the tip of the burrow uh, during uh, till the uh, um, end of the day and during the night time they leave the burrow come out from this that uh, sand pit and then swim actively in the water and they are ciliary feeder ciliary feeder means it feeds with the help of uh, beating of cilia beating of the, by the beating of cilia it can create water current and uh, there by the time it can take whatever food particles that present in the water current as it moves it into its body next uh, appearance it is fish like 5 to 7 centimeter long slender body and it is laterally compressed pointed at both ends this end also pointed and this end also pointed it is uh, having the color of a faint flesh color so not dark uh, flesh color faint flesh color uh, this is the uh, its appearance hmm. appearance then body how can we divide its body we its body we can divide into tail a trunk and a snout okay and the body possesses three openings which are the three openings mouth is there you can see mouth here then uh, atrium atrium means it's a cavity that uh, is formed from the ectoderm ectoderm lined cavity that cavity opens out by atrial pore that is the second opening and third opening anal opening is there uh, so that's why three openings are present and uh, the anterior end i already told you that notochord extended 
uh, for the to the anterior end to form a snout it is otherwise called rostrum okay then we are, we are going to learn more uh, learn more about uh, some additional structures than seen in the anterior region so uh, below the uh, so before that uh, this is the mouth region mouth region mouth that mouth uh, mouth we can see somewhere somewhere here and the mouth opens into a cavity called buccal cavity buccal cavity is otherwise known as vestibule and that vestibule is lined by a toady okay and then again come to this region this region we know it is snout or rostrum and below the rostrum they present a uh, oral hood oral hood is actually an extension of integument uh, integument is means uh, integument means the outer body covering integument so that oral hood is an extension of uh, integument and that oral hood is margined by so many finger like projections called buccal cirrhi okay next again as we look into its um, uh, buccal cavity we can see some other additional structures um, the important structure is wheel organ what is wheel organ in the um, um, buccal cavity uh, or uh, buccal cavity we can see so many um, grooved ridges grooved ridges we can see here and that grooved ridges collectively known as wheel organ or muller's organ very very important what is wheel organ or muller's organ there are certain grooved uh, ridges seen in the wall of the buccal cavity or the vestibule buccal cavity is otherwise called vestibule and those uh, grooved ridges uh, bears numerous cilia also and uh, as uh, uh, one more additional structure is there that is hatches group hatches group uh, means the, the mid dorsal mid dorsal uh, that uh, group or ridge it is the largest one that is called the uh, hatches group and that hatches group have a pit ciliated pit in it and that pit is called hatches pit and what is its role it is secrete mucus okay so um, in this slide we have to um, understand about muller's organ then hatches group and hatches pit okay this is the atrium uh, ectoderm lined cavity this is all about uh, in this slide then can move to next slide and here we can very clearly see the mouth opening mouth opening is here and the atrium is opening uh, by here uh, in the form of atriopore this is the atrium atrium means ectoderm lined cavity and uh, which are the fins i already told you which are the fins uh, the amphioxus have a dorsal fin it is just from here to here dorsal fin is there and uh, um, uh, covering the entire tail it has another fin it is called uh, caudal fin and towards the ventral side there is another fin it is called the ventral fin and all these fins are um, single it is not paired so that's why we can tell that paired fins are totally absent uh, but all these fins have fin rays fin rays means the support um, there's some hard support that present in these fins to keep it in um, in uh, exact uh, uh, shape and position so that is fin rays are also present the next term we need to understand is about uh, epiplure epiplure means it is the ridged ventral uh, surface uh, of the amphioxus in the ventral uh, surface we can see so many ridges uh, uh, along its ventral side that ridged ventral uh, surface of amphioxus is called epiplure uh, and uh, on, on the both side of the epiplure its margins this side and this side this produced into two hollow folds fold fold folds it is called the metapleural fold uh, so epiplure is clear to you metapleural fold also clear and this metapleural fold is surpassing 
towards the anterior and it uh, joins with the oral hood. That means it is continuous with the oral hood. Next slide. About skeleton. An exoskeleton is present. Endoskeleton, uh, notogo, endoskeleton means endoskeleton structures like in autocode, then fin rays, uh, fibrous connective tissue, all are present. Then uh, coming to body cavity, true serum is present, uh, and that true serum is of endocelic type that I already explained to you. And uh, the serum is spacious in embryos. Uh, when that embryo developed into adult, it is limited by the atrium towards the anterior end. Uh, what are these foods? Diet and small microorgan sorry, um, small aquatic organisms are uh, its food. Then protozoans also its food. Uh, it is a ciliary feeder. Ciliary feeder means it feed. It collects its food by the beating of cilia in water. Then reproduction, coming to reproduction, they are gonochoric, that means sexes are separate and uh, no sexual dimorphism is found in amphioxus. Then coming to the evolutionary significance of Bangustomata. Uh, what is the significance? Uh, significance is that it possesses a mixture of primitive, degenerate and specialized features. Primitive uh, means uh, the features that is present in um, primitive forms. It is present in uh, amphioxus. And also it has some degenerate characters. Degenerate characters means uh, in its uh, mm, uh, larval or embryo form it has certain structures. As it become adult, those structures uh, will disappear. Uh, those structures are called degenerate. And also some specialized features are also present in amphioxus. First, we can go and understand what is primitive features, what are the primitive features that present in the branchiostomata. Persistent notochord, persistent notochord, notochord persists throughout the life. So, that is a primitive feature. As uh, move to um, further, as move uh, further in the evolution, as we go, ad, go in advanced form, notochord will not uh, persist throughout the life that we already understand uh, that only in the larval forms usually not a code is present as the organism proceed or progress to its adult form the not a code is uh, replaced by um, uh, vertebral column but it is not happening uh, it is a uh, not a code is persist persist in this amphioxus so that is a primitive feature yeah. Absence of specialized head, that also a primitive feature. Uh, then absence of paired fins and limbs, that also a primitive feature. And enterocelous coelom, it possesses an enterocelous coelom. That is also a primitive feature. Ciliary mode of feeding, it have a ciliary mode of feeding, that is also a primitive feature. Then coming to degenerative characters, which are the degenerative characters. That means degenerative characters means uh, for adapting the sedentary mode of life. Sedentary mode of life means um, how it spend its li life during the daytime. I already uh, told you that uh, during the daytime uh, they uh, spend their whole time by inserting its head, um, head uh, inside a burrow in this way. So th for that type of uh, live life. They need to uh, they need to discard some of their specialized structures. So that is a degenerative feature, degenerative characters means the characters they may lose as they become adult. Which are those characters? Absence of well developed brain. Then specialized uh, specialized sense organs are lacking. Then absence of a bony endoskeleton. Uh, then forward extension of notochord. Uh, that hinder the proper development of brain. These are the degenerative characters that amphioxus possess. Next, uh, specialized features. These are the specialized features they have. Um, because of the specialized features, um, we can uh, tell that this animal is an evolutionary outshoot. Outshoot means what? Uh, outshoot means uh, as uh, if 
a normal uh, path means it is going in a correct uh, line straight line if some additional features arise in an organism then it will be an outshoot from the normal uh, uh, normal course so in because of that attributes that attributes means because of having some specialized uh, characters uh, we feel like the amphioxus is an evolutionary uh, evolutionary outshoot evolutionary outshoot which are those specialized features an extended snout then oral hood and velums are all unique features uh, then endostate uh, somewhat uh, then extended atrial cavity is also a specialized feature okay only this much with this we finish uh, today's class and section thank you